hitting the heavy metal. Here's your look at the Boss Fight Studio Vitruvian Hacks Highly Articulated Character Kit System, the Knight of Accord Warrior of Order. With blasted land orcs becoming more warlike and increasing both the number and scale of their attacks on the southern borders of Accord, casualties among the knights increased dramatically. Running out of suitable recruits, Lance Steelblade, over the objections of many senior knights, opened the roles of the order to females. There was an immediate influx of recruits who required training. Lance assigned King Leonidas to the task. Leonidas turned the traditional three-year training regime of the Knights into an intensive muscle-and-mind testing six-month course based on Spartan principles. The first graduates already started filtering out to the front lines in order to aid in pressing the orcs back. Even though it is the daytime, it really is the nighttime, the right time to have a look at the Knight of Accord. Before we get a closer look at the figure, I'd like to thank the folks over at Boss Fight Studio that did provide this sample that we could have a look at in this video. Bringing in slowly, because I realize sometimes when I bring it in abruptly, if you guys are leaning forward on your desks, eating your sandwiches while watching these videos, thank you for that, by the way. Bringing this in quickly may abruptly startle you, and I don't want to do that. So I'm going to bring it in nice and slowly. Clickety-click, Barbatrick. We're going to take the tape measure right to the very top of the knight's head. And you're looking at the figure standing about three and three quarters of an inch tall. So it stands within line with all the other Vitruvian hacks and hero hacks figures we've looked at thus far. Spinning around to centimeters, and you're looking at the figure being closely to about nine centimeters in height. Not that they are really from the same world, but here's a figure we just recently had a look at also from Boss Fight Studio. Here's what the Knight of Accord looks like next to the blue costumed phantom that came included with the little tiny people. Little people, they were actually called. You can see that, like in this case, the Knight of Accord is about the same height to Phantom, although you can easily see, though, the Knight of Accord has a lot more armor than the Phantom we looked at before. A lot of stuff comes in clue with the Knight of Accord. Starting first, the figure comes in clue with a display stand. The display stand is very much different than the one we got before with the Hero Hacks, just to bring that one in so you can see the difference between the two. The plastic is, yes, the same, but the swooshed display stand also here does, doesn't does have Hero Hacks or anything along those lines. Instead, what we only get treated to is Boss Fight Studio. Some nice detailing actually done to the plastic molding that they've used. And you can also see there's fewer pegs on the top of it. It attaches onto the bottom of the feet the same way you will want to be taking the figure and just doweling the peg d display stand onto the... Doweling basically just means I'm taking the stand and I'm twisting it against the feet to broaden the size of the hole. And once the hole is big enough, then the figure isn't going to be going anywhere. Not that I would be doing a blizzard test, but yeah, the figure attaches fine to the display stand with a little bit of doweling. I'm going to put the figure down here for a second. Uh, as for the rest of the things that come included with this figure, it's mostly all weapons, armor, helmets, along those lines. Put that down for a second. Figure comes included with a sword. Nice looking sword. It's got a more off-colored silver for the actual broad blade. The guard is done nicely in gold with a matching gold accent on the end of the hilt. Again, some nice real color and sculpting happening here. Also comes included with a scabbard, which matches the color, although the colors of the blue and the gold are a little bit more dingier, which would make sense if this is something that the knight is carrying around on their suit. Ironically, I'm saying that. You can take this sword and slot into the scabbard, although it seems to only go with a little bit of persistent force. I don't know why it takes actually as much effort as it does to get the sword into the hilt. Wondering if it maybe isn't wide enough. Maybe I need to widen it a little bit more. Maybe I just have to take a few passes before I actually make that canal a little bit more open. Sword doesn't, like I said, fit well in there at all. I almost feel I wouldn't want to push it in completely for the risk I would have and a real hard time actually just removing the sword altogether. Of course, you can take the sword and fit it into her hand. As for the scabbard, though, I'm not really sure whereabouts it could go on the knight. Now, I've picked up the figure multiple passes and rotating the figure around. I've tried to look at places where I think it could go. Like there's these little holes here on the back that for all intensive purposes, there's a peg off after all on the bottom of the, on the back of the scabbard that you could really twist it onto it. But being that this is softer plastic and the peg is also softer plastic, it may involve you having to actually heat this to get the scabbard attached onto the back properly. 
One thing you can also do too is you can take the shoulder pads off completely. They just attach by the peg located on the back of the torso. So you think to yourself, well, maybe you could take the scabbard and attach it there. The hole then seems almost too big to fit the peg. So that's not really going to work either. Let's go ahead and put this back on before I lose it. The only other place that I thought maybe I could put it on and it would only be a loose solution uh, is to take it and actually just above the skirting between like this part of the armor and the side skirting of the leg. There's this little gap right here. You can also technically cheat and take the scabbard and attach it there. And that might be the closest thing I have to having a, a solvable solution to where I can actually put the scabbard. Still, though, I don't think I'm going to be putting the sword in. I mean, first of all, even if you were to put the sword in, look how close it would be. It would be butting up against the shoulder armor, and I'll be dropping the scabbard in the process. I'm going to have to go back and retrieve that in a second. Other things that come include with the knight. Getting the feet completely leveled flat. I really should have just kept the display stand handy, but you know what? I think it's I think she's going to stand okay. Figure also comes in clue with a shield. The shield, I really like the look and the coloring of this one. It would match the scabbard I just finished dropping. It would also match the same blue and the gold that was also here on the sword. But like the scabbard, it's a much more darker color. Those seem like flying horses, at least from what I can tell on the front of the shield. You also seem to have a star and a pointed formation down below. And some nice gold accents and silver accents that add to the shield with some nice additional blue on the inside. This attaches onto the hand. You're simply just going to, you don't have to necessarily bend the elbow, but you can go ahead and just take the hand and take the existing hands that the hands, the existing hands that come include the figure, and just attach them onto the handle. Now, it's a little harder to do, especially when you're doing this in front of a camera, but the shield does fit well into her hand. The thing that confuses me next, though, when it comes to include with this figure, uh, we already had the issues with the scabbard, is also the staff here, which is basically like it's a staff that has multiple purposes to it. As it goes right now, it's just a standalone staff or bow staff stick. The coloring is nice, done in a more dark chestnut brown. You've got some silver accents that's riveted along the top of it, with the middle section done in silver, and of course the ends done also in silver. But then there's also this blade, this spike, that turns it from a staff to a spear. You simply just take the top of it and attach it onto the peg that you can see provided on the top. It does involve a little bit of twisting, but eventually, well, a little more straighter would be handy. And you got yourself a rather nice looking spear that you can carry around with her as well. That's not the part that confuses me. The part that confuses me is this part right here. You may think to yourself, well, wouldn't you simply just swap one for the next? Well, we can go ahead and, and take and remove that. The only other thing I thought it could do, too, is you could take the two halves and attach them together. And she sort of can have like a, like a little small axe, which I guess is probably the thing it's intended to be. Because you can't take the axe and attach it onto the end here, or the one that has the axe blade. There's no place. This doesn't detach. This part doesn't detach either. So there's no real literal place that you can attach this onto the actual staff handle. Why I think this actually attaches together, and now she has herself like a little small axe weapon, which I actually think is kind of cool the way they've designed that. The other thing you can also do too is detach the shield from her hand. We'll go back to that more in a second. Again, we'll just get her feet a little bit straight. There we go is that there's these little loops on the inside of the shield. You see one there, you see one there. You can also take these, and even though it's probably not the intended plan for these either, you can fit these into the loop, and she sort of has like a little spike on the end of it. I guess she can use it as a stabbing attack weapon. Again, that's probably not why it's there in the first place, but it is a place that you can put there. And I guess you could fit this thing through as well, but I mean, like with the loops, the way that they are, I don't know if I would want to try to feed this all the way through for the risks that it may break it. But I think that's one of the reasons why they've also put the loops in there as well, that you can take then the staff and loop it through the shield as well. A lot of different options available, and I love the fact that they actually do these with a lot of their Vitruvian and Hero Hack figures, that a lot of the accessories you can mix and match. You don't have to necessarily use them for the figures that we're seeing in these videos. You can use them for other figures, or again, you can mix them around and have different ways of displaying the figure. Speaking of which, speaking of displaying the figure in different ways, oh, actually one thing we'll do just before we actually depart and look at the figure it's itself, she actually comes in clue with a couple of gestured hands too. Simply just pop those hands. But again, like for how cool these accessories are, why would I be removing gripping hands anytime soon to replace them with gestured hands? There's always that option down the road though. We'll put those to the side. Okay. So let's pick up the figure. And like I said, there's different ways of displaying the figure. First of all, 
I certainly did want to spend some time to talk about the defaulted head sculpt. As you can see, she's wearing a cowl made of chain mail, and it's a nicely sculpted face. You got some nice red coloring added there for the eyebrows. Some equally nice coloring of pink added there to the lips. And actually, I think the skin tone is nicely handled too. The chain mail, as small as this may be, is handled really well. I'm going to get in as close as I can. One of the benefits of using a camera like this. And just again, like look how intricate that chain mail is for something that's smaller than my thumbnail. Now, with this head sculpt, you can use this helmet here. And it does have the wings there off to the side. I like the additional gold. It matches the gold that's trimmed along the shoulders and along the rest of the armor. But that just fits over top of her head. Just like that. And I would kind of consider her more to be the commanding party member of the rest of her group with this look right here. But if you kind of want to have just more of a generic knight, first before we do that, I want to spin this around so you guys can see it. We don't shortchange you guys at all in these videos. We want to make sure you guys get as much in as you guys possibly can. Really nice looking helmet. The other option that you can do too involves me having to remove this first of all. And then she comes with basically more of a defaulted helmet that really conceals a lot of her face. It conceals a lot of her face because you're also going to be removing the helmet. This doesn't simply just fit over top of her head. I'm glad it doesn't either because I think there would be a bigger risk of that chipping off a lot of the paint on the face. Instead, what you do is just grab onto the torso and yank the head off the ball joint. Go ahead and then replace it. And this actually was the head that we started these videos with, this specific video with. And like I said, you get a more just generic looking knight. I would really be interested to pick up more than one of these so I could actually have one as the knight that actually has the crown that has still the visible face, and then just maybe a couple of these as regular, just generic knights. So there's that option as well. Super, super cool. Let's go ahead, though, and pop this back off, revert it back to the way that we had it. Pop that back into place. Make sure it's in all the way there. And certainly when it goes for the rest of the body, maybe what we'll, we'll do for the time being is we'll leave off the helmet. We'll probably go back to that, I think, in final looks. For the rest of the armor, it's a more slimmer-looking build, being the fact it's a female knight. But, like, the armor is really nicely handled here. Things like shoulder pads, as we've already seen, is actually something that attaches onto the back of the torso via that peg. Still, though, maybe with the holes that attach to the scabbard as a possibility, as that's another place where you can store the sword. But these are being softer plastic, and the way that they are attached doesn't seem to limit the articulation on the shoulders. I mean, granted, you wouldn't be able to rotate them all the way around, but still enough of a job can be done. She has some additional skirting also that attaches in a very, very small amount of plastic. You can actually see the way it's looped around a peg. While it does not eliminate any bit of leg articulation, I do worry about the longevity of that. You can see the way it's looped around that peg. This literally looks like it's just attached over top. I would hate to think at some point this is going to fall off for me because I think it's going to be a real pain to try to get that back into place because it's just the way it looks like it's looped around that peg. I do like the gold trim that they've added here. Like the, the darker silver. I wouldn't even know if I would say it's still silver. It's almost more like a tarnished gunmetal gray. Nicely colored here in the figure. The underbody here actually is more of a black coloring that she actually has also there in her forearms underneath the guards that cover over her, her arms. And of course, she's got that also on the tops of her biceps too. But like the majority of it, when you're looking at from the back, you can see like very much exposed, unarmored legs. This is not be the point. This would probably be the bad place to be standing if your opponents are behind you like this. They probably can go for a direct shot to the back of the leg. She has a little skirting there also in the front of her. We can just lift that up. This is softer plastic, by the way. But again, like the paint on this is so really good. I love the fact that you get as many accessories as you do. And I think when it comes to actually displaying this figure, I'm probably more inclined, I think, to display her with the helmet, which I'm not going to put in place completely because we want to talk about the articulation. And I might think I'm going to craft together that little axe and have her displayed that way. Uh, for the articulation here, though, for the Knight of the Cord, the head is on a ball joint, so it does technically rotate all the way around. It does look down quite a, quite a bit, actually, and it does look all, also up quite a lot. Head rocks back and forth as well. Now, we already talked about the fact that the shoulders are attached only by a peg on the back of the torso. So when it comes to moving the arms, you're going to be limited this sense because you really don't want to pull it too far back in case that rips any bit of the softer plastic back there. But you can certainly move the arms out. There's no limitations there. Uh, there's no bicep swivel here. However, there's a swivel here at the elbow, and there's also a single hinge in the elbow there. Hands rotate also back and forth. She has an upper torso ball joint. Despite the fact that she has so much armor here on her body, they still manage to put in articulation in the top of the torso. Legs split out. 
You can take the legs and move them forward and back. There is a swivel cut about three quarters of the way up the, up the thigh there. She has double hinge on the knee. Her knees are a little on the more scrawnier side, but being the fact that she has so much then armor over top of it probably would explain why they had to make the, the molding so much finer, slimmer, leaner. Then, of course, she does have articulation also here in the feet. You can rock those feet also back and forth. Really nice, really nice looking figure. The thing about a figure like this always seems to be the problem of trying to decide how I would want to display the figure. With so much going for it, so many different options available, so many accessories available that Boss Fight throw at the Knight of Accord, ultimately I think I'm still going to be reverting, reverting to the idea of displaying her maybe with the helmet and the wings. That's too good of a helmet, I think, to leave off the figure. Unfortunately, it will mean I will have to put this one back in the packaging, at least for the time being, or until I eventually get myself a Knight of Accord times two. I know it's going to happen at some point. The uh, The idea of displaying maybe one of maybe one like this with the helmet that we looked at and then a couple of the knights on either side with the more stock neutral helmet, a rabbit hole I definitely could see myself going down. First of all, I like three and three quarter inch scale. That's one of my favorite things growing up as a kid. I love the old G.I. Joe scale of figures. So this is right up my alley. You get super detailed figures, super poseable figures, and with the amount of accessories, again, that Boss Fight throw at this line, it's definitely a line that if you're not collecting already the Hero Hacks or Vitruvian Hacks, and you like the three and three quarter inch scale, you are really seriously missing out on one of the best three and three quarter inch scale figure lines out there. With still not knowing where that scabbard belonged in the Knight of Accord, ultimately I just attached it onto the side of the leg that I said I was going to do in this video. And it seems to do a pretty good enough job of staying there, providing I'm not going to be moving the figure around too much. You can also see as well that I've got the figure currently displayed with the axe, which is now my favorite thing I think I'm going to be displaying with her. I started the review on the turntable of having the figure with the covered over helmet and carrying around the spear. In the final looks, as we have the figure spinning now around on the rotisserie, I've reverted the look completely and decided to display her instead with the open face helmet that has the wings off to the sides, which I think actually not only is a cooler looking helmet, but it still gives you the opportunity to see the nicely sculpted face that Boss Fight put into this figure in the first place. And of course, I've got the shield also on the other side. As good as it is just to be carrying around a big mauling axe like that, you'd like to think also too that she's going to be able to protect herself. Now, the shield does have those little loops on the inside of it, which I can only suspect are they're in, intended to have this, the spear slid straight through. Maybe it's also going to serve as a, a sort of coat of arms, which is the other thing I thought that maybe that's the reasoning why they put the loops in there in the first place. That you put the shield a little higher up to the top of the staff, and it certainly served then as a coat of arms that the knights would be carrying around with them. As you can already see, just by what I've been saying in Final Looks and over the course of this video, there's a lot of different cool ways of customizing not only the Knight of Accord, but the rest of the Vitruvian hacks that Boss Fight Studios are putting out. A big thank you once again to the folks over at Boss Fight Studio that did provide the sample of the Knight of Accord that we could have a look at in this video. For your video question, whether you have this figure or not, how would you display it? Would you display it with completely the domed over helmet? Or would you display it with the eared or winged helmet that I've got displayed? And what kind of weapons would you display with this figure also as well? Also, if you're loving the content here, and first of all, enjoyed this video, hit it with a like. If you want to also stick around and make sure you're here for all the other Boss Fight Studio Vitruvian hack reviews that we have coming through the pipeline, make sure you hit the subscribe button down below and turn on the bell notification as well. And, and if you guys did want to see other reviews that I've done for Boss, Boss Fight Studio, popping up at the very end of this video will also be a playlist. That is to say, if you have a little bit of time on your hands and you're not, I don't know, protecting a kingdom. Do we do that anymore? Protecting kingdoms? I mean, that would be nice to say, like, I can't come into work today. I'm protecting my kingdom. Are you going to still come in tomorrow? I don't know. I don't know. I, it depends on how long I'm protecting my kingdom for. As I said, though, lots of stuff coming away, guys. So as always, thanks for watching. See you guys next time.